is, well, the whole world is going insane and Thane we trust. So <laughs> then right. take yeah. it away. Um, how, hello for, to the both of you, Mayor, Gary. Um, so we're, we're talking about Al Quds Day, the big celebration this week. You know, I have an essay, you were right, Mayor, I'm coming out this week, my uh, bi-monthly essay for the Jewish Journal of Los Angeles. And one of the things I say there is, imagine if the people from Luxembourg, just as an example, said that after their, whatever their national religion might be, that at the end of their holiest day or month, when they're finished with their religious obligations, the very first thing they do is set aside a day to hate the French people. Not just to hate the French people, but to, to incite violence against the French people. Imagine what the world would say about the Luxembourgians or any country, the Canadians and the United States, would say, no, 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 at the end of our religion, this is what we do. When we're finished, we're fully finished, um, uh, depleted actually after fasting under the, uh, the this holy scripture of our religion, the very first thing that we can think of is killing people. That's, that's who we are. Now, I, I, I dare say that if you were to say that about people from Luxembourg, you would call them barbarian. You would say, what else can you describe such a people? They're barbarians. And I'm sorry, that is what one would have to say about Muslims and Arabs that think that the end of Ramadan, the very moment it ends, the first thing we should do is incite violence against Jews to burn Israeli flags, to scream death to Jews, death to Israel, death to America, right? Death to America comes up also. Um, and so I just think that's something to contemplate when people think of the intentions of the Arab and Muslim world. If you listen to what they say, if you don't, if you don't fixate on, on the politically correct thing to say, oh, you know, all people are different and you respect their differences. No, no, no. You don't respect the differences of mass murderers. You don't. You don't say this is a question of, of, of moral relativism. You know, we do it certain ways and the Arabs do it. No, no, the Arab way of, of murderously dealing with Jews and only that's the, the only thing they can think of. They can't think of anything else at the end of the holiday. And I just think that that's something to pause and contemplate that these celebrations and, and they are celebrations are ostensibly to unite uh, 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 Palestinians with Jerusalem, right? Because Al Quds Day is really a celebration of Jerusalem Day for the ostensible purpose of reuniting it with Palestinians. Yeah, but then why is there all this talk about killing Jews? In my essay that's coming up, I quote the last two Iranian presidents about what they said on those days. And the last two presidents, I quote them, say things like, we don't want Israel to ever feel safe on that land. And we want to eliminate all Jews and Americans from the Middle East. What does that have to do with Palestinians? What does it have to do with Jerusalem? Why, if you listen to what they say, instead of this sort of purported reason for the holiday, this is not some celebration of Jerusalem. And let me just add one thing about Jerusalem with respect to the Arab consciousness. It's something that I've said in speeches around the world. And people look at me like, he can't be right. There's no way he's right. And you know what? I'm right. Here, here's just a little, you know, factoid. <laughs> it's too, it's too ridiculous. And and only if you were politically correct, you'd say, "Don't say that! Don't say that!" How many times is the word Jerusalem mentioned in the Old Testament? The number is actually six hundred and seventy times. So that when it came to the Jewish Holy Scripture. Jerusalem is mentioned 670 times. 
Now, for all the talk about the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Temple Mount and the Rock of the Dome as being the significant holy sites of Islam, how many times is Jerusalem mentioned in, in the Quran? Not once. Not once. If, if Jerusalem is so vital to the Jewish mind, to the, to the Muslim Islamic mindset, so essential to its history, how did it, how is it possible that Jerusalem was left out of their holy text? Totally out, doesn't exist. You might as well mention the Green Bay Packers. You mention anything, it's not in the Quran. So, but before we start creating holidays, reuniting this city with the legitimate heirs to the city, the Palestinians, one would have to ask yourself, I know, but it doesn't, the, the city doesn't appear in the Quran at all. And in the Old Testament, which is accepted by the Christianity through its New Testament, in which Jerusalem is also mentioned in connection with the Jews, you're seeing United Nations agencies like UNESCO twisting themselves in knots, purporting to claim that there is no Jewish connection to the ancestral home of Israel. There's nothing. There's no connection. Whereas the Old Testament only speaks of biblical cities that exist in Israel, and both Jews and Christians recognize the connection to the patriarchs of Judaism and Jerusalem. And yet we're told that all Jews must be killed because they are trying to prey on the land that is above King Solomon's second temple that they should, we should throw rocks at them and we should throw firebombs at them because Jews have, they cannot soil this land where the temple once existed. When in fact your mosque it is not mentioned at all. <laughs> yes, Mecca is mentioned in the Quran, of course, and Medina is mentioned, but not Jerusalem. So. It's just an, a, a little, you know, piece, an anecdote that's worth considering. What are those two points to revisit in a professorial way? Well, the first point is what kind of a people celebrate the end of their fasting and holiday by hating the other people and wishing nothing but their death? What would you say about them? And why is it that this is something that is acceptable under the thinking of moral relativism. Oh, you know, people are all very different. You like to do this, they like to kill you, and you need to respect that they like to kill you because you wouldn't want to offend them. You shouldn't offend them, it is their religion, and that's how they like to celebrate the end of their fast. And the second question to, to demonstrate this sort of the absurdity of the logic of Al-Quds is to say it's purportedly ostensibly about reuniting Arabs with this holy city, and it doesn't appear in the Quran. And then the last point I would make about this goes to the idea of, again, reuniting the Palestinians, re reuniting Palestinians with the West Bank and Jerusalem. You know, no Arab or Muslim or Persian country said a word about restoring the territories to Palestinians when Jordan occupied Jerusalem and the West Bank, and when Egypt occupied Gaza. No one said a word. Not one Arab country said, we need to strip that land, uh, to strip that, strip that land away from uh, the Jordanians and give it to the Palestinians. Why did this become an issue only when the Israelis reclaimed the land? Why only in 1967 did Arab and Persian nations, Muslim nations, decide that the world would never see peace unless there was the creation of an Arab state and the elimination of the Jewish one? Because if in fact the Arab world cared enough about the Palestinians, they would have A, said to the Jordanians, hey, you are the usurpers, <laughs> your colonial settlers of, of the land that's rightfully owned by Palestinians. Not a word was said during that time. No one uttered a phrase to give back the land to Palestinians. 
and 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 so one wonders or let's make room within our 22 arab nations and make room and invite the palestinians to live and jointly live in peace here in another arab country you have 22 failed arab states by any metric human rights constitutional democracy freedom of speech uh, independent judiciary the rights of women the rights of, of homosexuals failed 22 failed states one successful democracy in the middle east happens to be a jewish one and it happens to be the smallest of those 22 states that's the state that needs to be eliminated that's the only one that's the human rights violator the one where women can go to rock concerts and 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 not worry about what they're wearing and homosexuals can attend rock concerts and hold hands one country in any any one of those others where this can happen and yet somehow israel is de demonized as both illegitimate and a country that should not exist and and a country that violates human rights Thank you.